Lately, I have noticed a growing fear of data structures and algorithm among developers. Due to their limited time, they often feel confused about what to prioritize. Should they first start with the DSA or focus on development? Which one is more important? How much time they should spend on each? These questions tend to paralyze aspiring developers, leading them to do nothing. It's like trying to chase two rabbits and catching none. Now, deciding which path to take is tricky because it depends on the person asking, right? So I'll break it down in three groups. The first is students, those in like college, probably graduating soon or in two to three years. Second group is of self-taught developers, those coming from different field. And third are career changers, those with experience outside tech looking to transition into tech. So let's start with our first group, students. If you're in college, this is the time to learn DSA. I know you have classes and exams, but you need to make time for it. The reason is simple. When you go for an interview, employers will expect you to solve DSA problems because you studied computer science. Nowadays, for fresh graduates, DSA questions have become the norm as companies use them to assess his analytic abilities. I mean, those tests are bogus, if you ask me, and gives nothing about you, so don't take them personally. Just do as told. Learn as you told and get rid of it. Don't waste time debating when you knew you have to do it. And for development, if you're applying for a front-end position, for example, you will need to have some knowledge of it, right? Not everything, but at least the basics. Companies hire fresh developers uh, or fresh graduates with the intent of training them. So you're not expected to be an expert. Uh, however, that doesn't mean you should spend all your time doing DSA and ignore the development. I would recommend like 25% time on DSA and 75% time on development. Now let's move to our second group, self-taught developers. For self-taught developers, the task is straightforward. More than 90% of your time should go to development. Once you cover the basics and build some projects, you can start practicing the easy DSA questions. You won't be part of traditional hiring process like college graduates, but that doesn't mean you won't land a job. I am a self-taught developer and I'm just doing fine. Your focus should be on finding opportunities like your life depends on it. You need only one job to break into the tech industry. Once you get that first role, the playing field become level. After that, if you want a higher salary or you want to work in a fan company, you can start doing DSA. Now let's move to our third group, career changers. If you're coming from another field with some work experience, your path will be really similar to the self-taught developer group. You probably won't have time to focus on DSA, right? I mean, you have your full-time job. So I would recommend doing almost or allocating almost 100% of your time in the development process. The advantage you have is your experience. Employer will see that you are dependable, making you a less risky hire than fresh graduate or self-taught developers. Uh, so because of that, maybe many companies may not even ask you DSA questions. So now let's move like who ask DSA questions. So fan companies, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, like all those big companies, they will ask DSA, Google will ask DSA. If you're targeting them, then there's just no debate. You should start practicing as soon as possible. However, if you're applying for startup position or Fortune 500 companies, they might not even ask DSA at all. For most front-end position, if you're applying outside campus placement, let's say, DSA questions are unlikely. But instead, you should focus more on like front-end specific challenges. To practice those real-world front-end challenges, please check out codestack.com, a platform I'm building for web developers prepare for technical interviews like this. So please check it out. The link is in the description. So let's conclude this. So DSA has become a filtering mechanism for companies to separate candidates. Uh, for companies like Google, it makes sense, right? They offer great salaries and opportunities, but if a mid-level company with below par salary started enforcing the DSA requirement, they'll struggle to attract uh, talent. Over the next few years, we might see a shift where companies prioritize hand-on experience, problem-solving ability, and deep understanding of a tech stack over purely DSA-based questions. If I were you, I would focus on building things that people actually want to use. This is what I preach on this channel. These kind of projects aren't easy to figure out, but once you do, they will be life-changing. DSA is important, but always keep in mind you are going to be a developer not necessarily be doing algorithm all your life. And if you really want to do algorithms, you should actually do your master's or PhD in math so that you can try those algorithms, right? And you can improve them. 
If you don't think you want to do that, focus more on your dev skills.